In this past month, we lost a member of our community to a bicycle incident on Highway 60. So we can have one more short moment of silence for Mr. Hill. I did put Ripley because I was thinking of Ripley, but um, after uh, I went and I looked at it, I think 
We'll be good with just closing um, the half block of Main Street from Ripley to the middle portion of, of that street in front of the street.
requested, but only up to 10. So a person's able to t use 25 days in one fiscal year. Um, it explains the approval process. If a person wants to do it, they have to go, they have to submit an application, which I uh, showed an example of. They have to get the physician's uh, statement filled out, and then they submit it. I would be, or the mayor, I'm not you know, in the future if there's another mayor, the mayor at the time would initially review it, and they would say yes or no, um, depending on if it falls under the guidelines. If it does not fall under the guidelines, the employee can disagree with that uh, thing, and that, then it would be brought to town council to review that also. If it um, gets approved by the mayor at the time, all that means is that it falls under the criteria. It doesn't mean that it's, it's, he's re re um, recommending for it to be approved. It then goes to a three-member committee, which is um, all of the supervisors. So it would be Daniel, at his current time, Daniel, Chief Reyes, and town clerk Dennis Wolfer. If it's one of them requesting that, then I would choose a replacement for them. Uh, that's an employee that would take their spot in making that determination. Um, it has an explanation of values, which again, the town of Mount Air shall use a cash value of each hour contributed to make sure liabilities remain the same. Thus, if a person making $20 per hour donates a day to a person making $10 per hour, then that one day counts for two days of the person receiving the day. Vice versa, if someone donated a day is a $10 per hour employee, and are donated to an employee making 20, that one day would count as a half day. For this reason, when calculating the balance of the city bank, the town owner will use a cash value of total hours given, and that is at the time that they give it. So it's July, Dennis gives it, he's making $15 an hour at the time, it's eight hours times 15. Next year, he got a raise, it's now $17 an hour. At that time, it's 17 times eight. So whatever their rate is at the time of donation, um, other than that, I think I kind of pretty much went through the through it all. Is there any questions or anything that I might have left out that people will have any questions on? Uh, they cannot be currently receiving sick or vacation leave payments, long-term disability payments, social security disability payments, or, or workers' compensation disability payments. So if they're already receiving one of that, they cannot apply for this. They have to use their full amount first. So if they get, you know, if they if they get sick, they have to use their vacation, their sick leave, and then they can request to use this. They can't use this um, to save their vacation or an actual vacation. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Any questions? What is the what's the policy right now for the for an employee that they've used there an example of uh, someone that retires? Does the town pay that sick leave up to them? No. They catch that sick leave in? Is there no, a certain amount? Yeah, we do vacation up to a certain amount. But not sick. But not sick. Okay. No. And no, so that's why I wonder why you have so They use it or lose it. Okay. And even if they max out, if someone can max out, they, they reach a max, they, they don't accumulate. They, they stay at that max. 192. Yeah, I think it's 192. And what's the criteria to use it? Like, say, one of your employees right now that's senior there, about to go, wants to, I don't take a month off. Can they put in sick leave or do they? Uh, they they can put in for, well, they can under put in for sick leave, but if it's more than three days, they need a doctor's note. It's currently you would say? Yes. Okay. I just wondered how that was for a So they, I mean, if they took a sick day every other day or, you know, if they took a sick day every Friday, I mean, we would obviously have to talk with them at that point if that was happening. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, yes, it, they, sick leave, if you, in three or more days, um, is it three or more? I want to say it's three or more. So you can be sick two days and no doctor's note. Third day, you need to document the thing. Yes, or you need to or whatever. And then, uh, so the current, what are we replacing with currently? What wasn't there? Wasn't there something that, if I remember right, David could have given days to just anybody at one point in time? Like, he gave all of his time to fill this, or were you? Well, that's that what's been done in the past. Yeah, that's what's what's been been what, past. That, that's what's current. That's what we're trying yes. to replace now. Yes. And have you spoken to the rest of the employees? Like, are they in favor of this, or are they, do they want, like the old policy? That's that's what I. Would. Well, I just don't think that the old policy is fair. What I mean, it doesn't bring down like, to the hours and stuff. I gotta get that. I mean, I guess if someone was making level, we give it to somebody who wasn't. Right. Well, that didn't happen, obviously. That obviously. It was not just they just did, did, Yeah, that. they would just give the amount of hours. So if I'm retiring, and uh, I'll just give my hours to Adrian because I like Adrian. But I, I don't think that that's fair. I think that it should be. 
properly and not just given to your best friend that didn't really just do anything to deserve it, really, other than uh, make you coffee. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder if we can do it down like that as well. I thought that's how it worked. And how, what is your staff look like? Current office staff? Phyllis uh, uh, is all in favor of it. I'm all in favor of it. I'm maxed out, so it's kind of like a waste of my, my time to, I'm losing all the eight hours a day. I'm donating eight hours a month to this city bank. And that, that would benefit but actually, somebody. It actually benefits somebody too. Yeah, because I never. Most people actually max out and don't use it. Yeah. Max is 192? 192 days, right? Hours. Or hours. 192 hours. Not days. Oh, yeah. That's how Yeah, 192 hours. I want to just, those are the persons that staff was on board with it and liked it. What was it for replacing? And could they get their time paid to them? Yeah, no, we don't pay off time. Any other questions? I think it's a good idea because uh, from my past working experience where I work is they use it for this, this, and this, and this, which actually they're not sick. But when it comes that they need it, that's when they go for the sickly bank. Or I feel they, they should be saving it because, I mean, not using it for going to ball games, you know what I mean? Uh, for what you need it, you hurt for those days because they're taking a chunk out of your... And this is just like an insurance policy. That's yeah. what we're trying to make is an insurance policy to, to make sure that our employees, when they need it, even if they don't have it, to be, we, we got it for them. So he's maxed out. Does he continue to donate mm -hmm. these? He could. He could. You could donate. You could donate. Um, your time. Or he doesn't have to anymore. If he, if that's up to him. So he would just be required to donate the one day to join, and then four hours every year anniversary. But if he chooses to say, you know what, I'm maxed out, and uh, this eight hours that I lost, I want to put it in the bank. He can technically put it in the bank. So that's up to him and him alone. And I didn't read in here, I read through it before we came out, I didn't read in here, so that, that question brings another question to my mind. Say you had a retire, someone retiring, and they, they had a bunch of hours like, like David, and they did not donate, what happens at that time? Does it automatically now get donated? Yeah, so automatically. Okay, because I didn't read specific yeah. words to that, but that, uh, would be, uh, that would just kind of be an automatic thing? Like uh, no, one, no one specified? Yes, and actually, then what I would recommend, that's a very good point, um, retiring employees. So right now it says retiring employees are able to contribute their community to, to this bank upon retirement. Um, I would like to, to strike that and make sure that it says they would. I mean, that it would automatically. It would just default. It would default into the city bank, yes. So retiring employees, um, uh, sick leave, accumulated sick leave will be donated to this bank upon retirement. Okay. And this is per fiscal year, so that's another important thing. So let's say me, let's say for instance I'm, it's uh, March and I have um, a car accident and I have to be out for 20 days. I can take this and then I come back to work and I'm feeling better and then, you know, God forbid something else happened and I get a, a, the next fiscal year, I get another car crash, it, you would be eligible again. You just, it's a 25 day max for, for fiscal year, July to June. So, and again, there's no way to really cheat the system because you have to get a physician to sign off that you are, you have, you know, God forbid cancer or something that's, you know, life threatening or prevents you, you know, New York. Uh, this is also another thing, let's say a future council, or let's say in three weeks you guys decide, you know what, we don't like it, let's dissolve it. 
If town council votes to discontinue the bank, discontinue the bank, all members who are members of the bank at the time of discontinuing shall remain members without additional contributions until all days in the bank are exhausted of the remaining uh, pool of days, um, or is donated back. And I actually um, remaining pool days, or well, I actually believe that that or is donated or uh, prorated back to the contributing employees. So basically, what would happen is. Um, we would prorate it back to the employees at the time, or my recommendation would be they would still be eligible. They wouldn't have to donate the four hours anymore, but they would still be eligible until that goes away. So they would, they would just be there until that was taken off. But I don't see someone taking this policy off if we do it. I mean, I think it's a very good policy. The one that we use at the school, we, I mean, lots of people use this uh, safety thing. Otherwise, it matters for your direct employees. Right. Any further questions on that? I just have a question. What if it's an employee that's reoccurring? You know, let's say it's me. Okay, I have used it. Okay, the following year I need it, I use it again. The following year I use it. And well, I, I mean, you have to have a, a doctor sign off every single time, so. I mean, technically, under this policy, that is allowed as long as you have a person sign off. On it. Doctors don't just sign off for like things like this. They're, and lots of companies use this, so physicians already know kind of the safety bank policy. Mm -hmm. and, and the letter that we give them actually states to them, um, if you read the, the, the physician's statement. Um, it says, an employee of the town of Mount Air is currently petitioning the sick leave bank of the town of Mount Air for additional sick leave, which has not been earned. Granting this request could amount to several thousands of dollars worth of benefits. The sick leave bank needs the following information to determine if the employee or their immediate family member's medical condition is serious, unusual, or, and or catastrophic, thereby warranting the unearned sick leave. So I think that you know, tells the doctor not to you hope morally. Any more questions? So motion. We'll make a motion to approve the with the sick leave uh, bank policy. One question before we have a second. Just on the uh, criteria right after right the paragraph you read. The one of the, one of them is what's the nature or the severity of the condition? Questions and those are okay with the HIPAA. Uh, those are okay. That's information you can get. Mm -hmm. some well, this is this is used by the school, and we have people use it all the time. So, sure. okay. so okay. just that. Yes. Well, if you look on there, there's a part where you, as the employee, sign saying that you give the doctor permission to let the employee. Motion by Richard, currently active. Okay, motion by Richard, a second by Juanita. Roll call, Richard. Four. 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 Juanita. Four. Three. Four. Okay, approval of administrative assistant job description and advertisements. that maybe made a request was Juanita, is that correct? No one else? And Juanita's was that um, at the time we divided equally uh, along, so we did add this position will have their time divided equally between police, town hall, and public works or as directed by the mayor. job, um, assistant job that we're putting out uh, to help with various tasks around town. Um, they would assist the chief in certain grants, they would assist Dennis um, in certain tasks, and they would also assist me. Uh, there's a lot of things, especially now with like EMS that I'm trying to work on, that it's kind of hard when I'm at work. So if I can, you know, email them the night before and say, hey, can you call this and check on this and verify this, 
then person got next day they can make the calls during normal business hours and, and be able to get a to get um, a decision. Um, I we will have a test for this position, and what I mean by that is they will get tested on the computer. They will be given tasks to complete. They will be sitting at a computer, given tasks to complete, and they would have to complete those tasks within a certain time frame to make sure that they're capable of the activities that need to be done. Um, I don't want this position to be the best of the three. You know what I'm saying? I want it to be. We need some find someone that is capable of getting the job done. So if we only get three applicants and none of them pass that test, we would advertise again until we fill the position. I don't want just the best of. Um, we really need to have someone that's capable, that's, that knows uh, phone etiquette, how to call, how to request information, all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna be a pretty, and, and again, they're gonna need, I mean, when they work for Chief, it's gonna be with certain grants and stuff. So they're gonna be needed to know how to write and, and things of that nature. How many hours a week are you? It would be a full-time job. Full -time. So it would be a full-time position um, with benefits, everything, it would be a full-time And what kind of skill sets are you looking for? Uh, Computer-related, um, English, grammar, um, ability to speak. Um, if, I, if we send them to Santa Fe to um, you know, try to get money for us or talk to legislators, I think that would be huge. Um, you know, things of that nature. So. Yeah. Yeah. At an earlier meeting, you were talking about an administrator Job for public works department. Does this become that? Yeah, this would become that. Okay. Yeah. So, and this, so like with public works, this person would assist Daniel in making sure things are ordered, following up on 811, leaving Daniel focused with the guys on, on getting actual field work done. So that that's what he would help with the public works. With the police, they would help with putting in stuff, uh, putting in reports into uh, their system that needs to be done, helping with grants, following up with his employees, and then again with town hall, Dennis and myself, they'll be doing various tasks. They would actually learn, um, what I want them to do at town hall is to even learn the software, the new software that we have, so that way in case, for instance, uh, Esperanza is gone, we don't have to get a replacement, or if Phyllis is gone, payroll can still go on, you know, that kind of thing. So. Just an, an overall assistant that would be able to to help everyone be a multi -tester. So then it'd be cross training. Cross training. Same here with uh, when he does uh, added equally between the police town on public works. And then I'll hear you have work for at least probably most of the time. So that kind of no, no, it wouldn't be most of the time. I don't know where that was. So we'll, we'll scratch that out. Have you had? Page, what is that? Second page. <coughs> oh, yeah. Here from the last? Yeah. Are you striking that? Yeah, we're striking out the. Um, from where we were? From that entire um, paragraph that starts with this position with part. Because it would be three, it would be three different things. <coughs> Um, the way that I kind of see the breakdown uh, right now off the top of my head is police would at least get two days. Um, so whenever the two days is worked by police uh, or in the police department, they get paid out of the police fund. So that's how kind of this, it helps everybody because even though um, they are helping everybody, they're also getting paid from the different funds. So no one fund is taking a hit. It's multiple funds that are taking a hit. So um, uh, the way I kind of see it is right now two days with chief. Uh, and then the other three days will kind of be divided evenly between Public Works and Town Hall. In fact, Public Works and Town Hall is kind of tied together. I mean, most of the stuff that, that needs to be done from Public Works, such as the 811 calls and all that kind of stuff, happens at Town Hall right now anyway. So it would be at Town Hall, but um, their time would be paid from Public Works when they're doing Public Works. get someone that's highly qualified, it could be a little bit more. Um, the reason why it's kind of, I wouldn't say that low, I mean, because I don't think that's low at all, especially when you calculate all the benefits and everything that comes with it. 
um, is because we have other employees that have been here for a long time that makes around that amount. So I want someone that's, you know, if, if they make more than that, it would be someone that's highly qualified and has a prior past of being an administrative assistant or, or, or you know, working with, with the county, for example. between 12 and 13, dependent on their skill level. And obviously, you guys determine the skill level, uh, determine the pay, <coughs> and hire. The applicant should still come to the council, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It would be like a net, uh, this is just creating a new position, so they would still come um, to, the, to the council and, and whatnot. Be out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably still be out there. <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, depends on if you hear about all that walking traffic. It would be very beneficial to Dennis because, um, you know, if there's stuff that he's trying to handle in the front, uh, so people wise, you can have them in the back getting reports coming in. And now that we're doing all these grants, me and Dennis, we're slammed. I know Chief is slammed. I mean, we're trying really hard to get money for the town, and I'll announce that later if we've got two, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not easy work, and um, I don't know if you know this, but when, you, when you're at work, and you're working office work, and you get interrupted, your time doubles every time because you have to reconcentrate on what you're doing. So being able to put someone in the back saying, here, I need you to take care of this task, they're done in an hour, and he's up front talking to you. Yesterday was crazy. We had we have <laughs> we had our water guy here. We had a DFA in the office working. I was working on county with him. I had um, people coming in asking all my zoning questions, little uh, IT questions, everything all at once. And in fact, uh, the DFA guy even made a comment to me. He's like, Dennis was pulled in all different directions all at one time, and I was. I was like. Doing notaries, I was doing everything. It was a crazy day in office yesterday, and I couldn't just go into the back and just focus with the DFA and get it done. I had to constantly like refocus and re retrain my thoughts to what I was doing. Think about accounting. Think about water. Think about the water system. Think about law. I mean, I was just small over the place. Do we have the space back here? Yes, yeah, you do. Uh, may it, my office. And have, actually, we use the break room as well. Uh, when we in my report, I'll talk about the, our two um, audits that we have done. And one of them, they loved it. They're like, oh, we need to know what this information. I pulled it up right on the computer, it popped up, and we asked me a couple of this is great. I mean, no other municipality provides information that quickly because it's all digital, it's all electronic, and we have a computer. Yeah, they would be in my office most of the time. There's a computer back there, obviously, no one at work. So, um, I'm only on a Friday, so. But, uh, yeah, they would be in my office. And then there's also and we could have set up a third one right now that we come cubby. Mm -hmm. Right there, right there. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, I think you keep your low balance, and then um, again, if uh, if someone that is currently working for us makes less than what this job advertises, more than one people try. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Equal. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
last thing that I need to try. Two, they might be, I'm just, I'm just saying it could be a retired person that's gone through college and I feel if they gone through college and they have the experience, they have all these licenses, I don't feel we should pay them $13. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it would depend on their education. Even if, we, if they're going to be overpaid of somebody that's already been here. And that's what she's on. So she was on about uh, qualification. If and they're qual highly qualified, they should be making much more than the qualification. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. What about qualifications and or experience? Yes. Okay. Any more questions? This person would, would go through the police um, background check um, and because they're going to be seeing both sensitive police information, so they would have to pass a background check, pass all that kind of stuff, but they would be almost like a police officer, so because they will be seeing sensitive information. So, so yeah, we have people within the town or town of they're paid so a lot of times, you know, like within our government, we move over, but we are paid for thinking, you know, we're going to go down and pay. Oh, yeah. So what you're saying is if someone, let's say, is making $16 an hour and they wanted this job, it's at our present 13 and we hired them, they would still be making the $16 per hour. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't cut someone's pay to, to you know, I don't think we would have I don't know if anybody would. And whenever I do this test, they will be scored evenly, and they will be brought to you guys to vote on. So it's not going to be like something like, oh, they didn't really do a good job. It's going to be a scored, this is what they passed. I'll bring you examples um, of what they, for instance, I'm going to tell, you know, I can bring them in and say, I need you to type a letter to this person saying this, and then I want to see what they can accomplish. And that will be kind of one of their assignments. To make sure they're able to, to do all this okay. So is the next step for someone to make a motion? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you, Don. <Donna. laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Seeing what I see when I go in there and how crazy it can be at times. I mean, granted, you know, sometimes you go in there and it's, it could be dead too, but there's times where we have a lot of stuff going on. There's times where I'm emailing Dennis and Dennis is like, oh, okay, I'll get to it. And then he can't. And, I, and I, I don't blame him for that. I mean, he's busy. So, and like I said, there's lots of times where you can ask him. He gets emails from me at 1 o'clock in the morning because that's the time that I can sit down and actually concentrate. So if I can do that and send this person, whoever it is, he or she, you know, this is what I need you to do tomorrow. I need you to call and check on this grant. I need you to see if we can buy a used trailer for this grant. That was a really question that took me like three days to answer because I was just busy. So things like that would just happen and I, I can see this position as a, a major asset to this town. A major asset. To this, especially now that we're getting grants. A major asset. I see you mentioned 1250, then I'll make a motion we start this position to be advertised at 1250. Yeah. Uh, motion by Ernie just to do this position. Ernie, I'm assuming it's to strike out that one paragraph, correct, with those edits? 
Okay, yeah. Do you want me to make that part yes. of the motion? Yes, please. Sorry. Okay. So there's something else. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll make the motion to, to start the advertisers for the job and start it at 12.50 an hour. Also striking out the paragraph that's, that states the position is will require the applicant to work under the direction of the of two towns agencies but will be assigned to the police department most of the time. This position is funded by the police department and the town hall as a full-time employee with all major benefits package. That's the entire And a second by Andrew. Roll call, Richard. Four. Major. Four. Juanita. Four. Three. Four. Thank you. Uh, department has reports. Okay. Pass. Two prayers. Before I start, uh, hello. Before I start on my report, <coughs> uh, when Mayor Nietzsche and I have discussed this, this has been ongoing for a long time. It will benefit the town for this administrative assistant. It really will because things are getting far advanced and when you have your department heads doing three or four jobs, it also negates on your other functions. I have new officers. I'd like to introduce one of my new officers, Benita Perry. She's uh, doing very well, certified officer, and she's in training right now, which I'm doing. So as you can see, bringing in an administrative assistant would alleviate that in my side of, of the agency. Um, I spend a lot of time on grants. They're not easy. Uh, we just got approved for two uh, DOT grants that amounted to about $19,000. That in itself took me a lot of weekends and grabbing information that I had to put together because the town doesn't have that. We don't have a grant writer, a professional grant writer. So I took it upon myself and had a lot of help from a lot of my colleagues. So this position would definitely help out the town in a lot of aspects. Um, also, to add to the benefits, is that this is not an entry level position, this is an advanced position. So therefore, by being at the police station maybe two days, three days, it won't be like a permanent situation, it's where the project is needed. So if this person has to spend four days or a week at the town hall, then that's where that person is going to be and then go do the other projects that have to be addressed. Um, I'm willing to provide space for that individual, <coughs> computer, desk, whatever that person needs to get the task accomplished. So that's my contribution from my agency to help the town uh, make that adjustment and make that uh, an effort go even better. So that's what I'm saying on that one. Anyways, on the reports. Um, since the new transition that we've gone into, um, the officers have been out there doing <coughs> their calls, answering the calls, and taking care of the police services. Uh, in the last uh, month, we've had over 20 citations issued, mostly all PAs, which means they're just going to pay the fine and comes to the town. Only a few of those have actually gone to court, and they've won the cases in court. Um, we did have our officers assisted in the fatal traffic crash that happened with uh, Billy on Highway 60. That investigation is it belongs to the county and with the state police assisting that agency. We do not have any involvement in that. Uh, we've been bombarded by reporters, uh, people asking questions, a lot of people upset. Dennis was there the other day when this lady came in. Uh, they didn't like what we said, but th that's just the way it is. Uh, whatever the county is doing, that is up to them. That is, that is their jurisdiction. It happened outside our jurisdiction, and we assisted with what we could do at that point. Even if it would have happened in the town of Mountaineer, I would have turned that investigation over to the New Mexico State Police fatal team for investigation. That's leaving us out of it and being unbiased where the investigation continues. Uh, we had one larceny of tools. We already have a suspect, 
and we're going to go ahead and pursue that individual as one of our local druggies. Uh, animal Control Code Enforcement reported three violations. Uh, no adoptions this month. Compliance letters issue was one. No transfers and three code enforcement uh, letters being sent out. Mm -hmm. On the administrative side, Officer Reynolds, our, one of our new officers, and Officer Bernard completed the advanced latent print class in Estancia that was sponsored for free by the district attorney's office. Therefore, when they go to crime scenes, they're able to process that crime scene with our tools and actually expedite it as providing a criminal forensic side of our investigative services to the town. I just completed a class uh, recertification uh, with the Albuquerque Police Department. I recertified as a certified radar and LIDAR instructor, meaning that my officers would be trained in the use of the radar, which they are now, and the LIDAR, which is laser. Therefore, when they issue citations involving those two uh, pieces of equipment, they'll have more information to provide to the courts when they have to testify on how the radar is used, the enforcement methods we use, and how the radar works in LIDAR. Very important now because a lot of people nowadays are challenging those, but with this instruction, it'll give the court a very clear understanding of how these uh, methods that we use. Now with the Department of uh, Transportation giving us these grants, we're going to do a lot more radar enforcement. That's going to come in handy. So it's a, it's a one up for us to uh, do the, the service. Uh, they also, the officers also completed their uh, DWI uh, field uh, testing course. Uh, all the officers are required to be certified in, in TOPS 8000, which is the machine that is used to do the breathalyzer. It's called the breathalyzer. <coughs> also the SM7, which is a portable um, intoxilizer that we carry in our units when we suspect somebody's uh, driving DWI. We can start from there before we go to the Intox 8000. And also the legalities involved and how to testify in DWI hearings. So all the officers are, are going up to speed, even though they're certified. We're redoing the training to make sure it's documented in their the training files. Because that's the first thing that the defense asks you is what kind of courses you've been through when you go testify in particular cases such as that. Other than that, the uh, our vehicles for the code enforcement officer uh, we're waiting for the equipment to come in so it could be graphic. We could put on the graphics and the special equipment that he requires. So if you see Officer Bernauer floating around in an unmarked unit, it's not because it, we planned it that way. Uh, it's because we're waiting for our parts to come in. And that's coming in pretty soon. And that's already been uh, approved by the town council uh, as part of the, getting the, uh, the loan to buy that particular vehicle. I also believe that our USDA grant is, is yeah, getting, right. getting there. We already submitted our bids. Yes, I got to talk to her. Yeah, so that's another thing, buying another unit through the USDA grants, which saves this town huge amounts of money in buying uh, police vehicles. Other than that, uh, that's all I have for our report at this time. Does anybody have any questions on anything? Sir, do we have an overnight patrol? Do we have an overnight patrol and officer overnight? At this time, the, what the officers are doing is overlapping. Uh, we are staying out to at least midnight. Once Officer uh, Harry gets uh, released from FTO, then we're going to be able to cover 24-7 and weekends. As right now, there's only one day on the weekend that we do not cover, and that's usually on Sundays. But the sheriffs take over for us on that day. Uh, I do have one position left that I'm going to fill with uh, by next uh, meeting. I am uh, in the process of doing a background on the certified officer that will take that position. And uh, once that officer comes on board, uh, then we'll definitely be full and we'll be able to cover our town 24-7, seven days a week. And you won't have to depend on the sheriffs to do that before. 
we'll have that. I'm getting looks by council, so just we have not interviewed. Yeah, we have, we have an interview. We do the background this check. Is, I think that was your request. Check is going. To do the background check first before yeah. the interview, so we make sure that we're interviewing someone that's uh, capable oh. or able to do yeah. that. So yeah. that's we're, we're saving time. We're, saving we're not time. trying to bypass council. We'll come to council. <laughs> yeah. That was my next second. I know. I know. But, Oh, yeah, yeah, council so, looking at me like, we're like yeah, we know something about it. No, that's that's our last position that we have. That's a it's a very good candidate. So if the interview goes candidate. well, yeah. the background check comes back, and some of it was in a yeah. higher level um, position, uh, yeah. county sheriff's office. So. So. Yeah, so that will be our last position that we'll be uh, asking you to, to fill the department. Uh, and then we'll call it even on that point. We'll be full and ready to do what we need to do. Well, oh, is that what you look for, lieutenant or sergeant? That will be the sergeant position. Uh, the individual is very highly qualified, has all the certificates for it, uh, good references at this time. Um, so yeah, that would be for the supervisory position to assist me, or that individual would take over the patrol operations, thus leaving me with the administrative grants, investigations, political stuff to deal with. And then with hopefully with this uh, uh, administrative assistant, that's even going to free up more time. Because we are busy. I mean, we do a lot of things that a lot of people don't realize what we do to keep this town going. <laughs> so it'll be a good deal for you. It'll give us a total of four officers in your staff. It'll be four officers myself. Then uh, by hopefully by November I'll get a, a final approval from DOJ because I did put in for a grant to hire a six officer that would be a grant position totally paid for four years by the Department of Justice for a six officer and that would, benefits car everything would come out of that grant so the town would not incur any expense on that it would be totally paid yes. for. That's my dream, is to really? have that. <laughs> so I'm working on it. <laughs> so can I answer any other questions? Is the, uh, is the radar gun that takes the pictures, is that actually, um, can that catch semis? I'm seeing semis fly through town 50, 60 miles an hour all the time. That is not a radar gun. That is a speed uh, machine. Radar is only used in mobile and handheld. That is a speed tracking that is very accurate, and the cameras that we install are license plate readers. So they do take pictures, and your plates are reported to our system. So it's like the red light, kind of similar to the red light thing that they had in Albuquerque and Rio Rancho. Except they don't get automatic tickets. Yeah, but we don't get automatic tickets. That's the only difference. It's mostly used, uh, I'm using that as a tracking device. Uh, and statistical information because Dennis has applied for some DOT grants that requires a lot of statistical data of traffic. You will be surprised how much traffic we have in this town from we over thousands of cars go to this town. We're using that data to extract it so we can use it for our infrastructure on our DOT grants to improve the road, public safety. That's what we're using those mobile speed units. They're called mobile speed units. Okay. You had a question, ma'am? More of a request. Um, along with the safety thing, uh, I work over at the elementary school and I stand out with the kids early in the morning. And there used to be a car that would sit like at the island or right there, but I haven't seen one when we we're getting you know, more officers and stuff. Is there any way we could get that back? Because there's so many people yeah, flying that around is that that is one of our primary, the car you saw there was me, okay. uh, working in the mornings, working in the afternoon, the school patrol. Uh, I, I know that it. that helped a whole lot, but as of lately they've been like coming through right. and with the little ones walking across the street, I worry, right. so yeah. Uh, yeah so the officers, the officers that come in on the, on the semi uh, swing shift, mm -hmm. that's their first job. Before they even go to the station, that's where they go, and they do traffic enforcement. I do it in the morning when I come in, so therefore I, I grab the morning <coughs> traffic. And I've given a lot of citations, no warnings. Those tickets are $220 a pop. I catch you at 20, you're gonna get a ticket. 
and that, that's just the way it is. The child safety is very important. We have a lot of speeders that, that not from the town because they, they know the they know the routine. It's the out of towners going through here and the commercial traffic. Yeah, that's what I was missing. And that's what we're was targeting. Like semis or Winnebago. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we're trying to slow everybody down to go through the town at an easy pace, avoid accidents. That's our main focus here. Donna? Would that eventually lead to a road study? Pardon me? Would that eventually lead to a road study? Yes, we could do we could use that data and and extract that information. It's called the Selective Traffic Enforcement Program. It's called STEP. So when I do that, I'm recording. When I give tickets, it's being documented. We can extract that information and apply it to our grants and into our infrastructure grants if we need to. Because it's it's viable. You know, we're slowing down traffic. We avoided accidents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, that is a very viable data tool. So we're doing. We're not targeting anybody. It's used for purpose. Yes, ma'am. Chief, uh, there's been incidents that I have reported things going on, and I call uh, dispatch because your officers are in town. You know, they're not the truck as you should. Right. And they have told me that if they would give the information to you to make sure that this incident wouldn't happen again. Have they advised you about it? It depends on what the uh, information is. Because I've reported it two times, and it just seems like no to stop. Well, Dispatch is its own entity. Okay. It doesn't fall under the sheriff's department, and we pay for a service. What they have been doing, if you're reporting a crime, and there is no bond there also available, it transfers automatically to the sheriff's or state police. I've had a county call me back. Yes. And yes. they've told me that they would let you guys know. Yeah, they, they do that out of okay. courtesy, okay. just so that we know what's okay. going on. Right. Plus, also, the officers are able, through their laptops and their units, we can bring up what they call unit history, mm -hmm. and we can see the calls that have been generated when we were off or not on duty. Okay. So, and then I get, they call me all the time, hey, we just want to let you know this, and if it's important information on suspicious activity, something like that, I pass that information on to the officers in our daily briefings. Hey, hit this area, we, we're getting calls on this, go over here, go talk to this person. So the officers are not, Slagging. We get the information, yeah. we work on it to make sure. Because I knew that you were short and that's Yeah, that was the only reason. If there was a delay, yeah, right. it was because of that. But now okay. that they know that we're coming up, they're actually giving us less and we're taking all the calls. Okay. During executive session, maybe you guys can chat about that. Yeah. So, that's just what you know. No, I'm not trying to like stuff no, up now. I'm no, just no. saying like, yeah. so you guys can see if that was reported to him. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, any other questions? Okay. Perfect. Thank I'm you. good. Thank you. Uh, public Works is, um, I don't think we have the report. He actually went home <coughs> at about 3 o'clock today. He was in the room. Um, so we're going to skip that. Uh, EMS and Fire uh, carrying. Um, unfortunately, was not able to be here, but she did mention that they only had one grass fire, and that was it as far as fire. Um, EMS, <coughs> uh, Dennis, and myself will touch on that in our reports. Um, finance and administration. Uh, we had a PRC uh, EMS audit. On Monday of last week, and um, the auditor was actually kind of cool. He was less uh, stressful than I expected him to be. But uh, he said um, there are a few items that are coming due, uh, such as our annual uh, vehicle inspection, which is due next month. So I'm going to go and get a PO and take it down there. And I already spoke with um, a few of the EMS people to do that. And then ideally, we should be doing quarterly inspections with a pharmacist. And it hasn't happened in about seven months. So I'm going to talk to Casey about getting that all ordered. But otherwise, all of our records were in order. and. Um, it was, it was a pretty good, uh, good uh, audit. Um, shall we do that? Yeah, we got a capital outlay for uh, fifty thousand dollars from the last legislative session for youth and community programs. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, we don't have any programs, <laughs> so we need to put together some programs, and they have to be kind of under a year long because this this money reverts back to the state at the end of this fiscal year. So we need program managers and programs, and it's going to have to come through the town as <coughs> a separate entity. We won't necessarily be able to partner with anybody or nonprofits or anything like that. It has to be through the town for this to, to be able to, for them to pay us back. Uh, we also had a uh, Mexico Environment Department audit our water system, and uh, Daniel was in on it. Uh, Dominic Donorama from the New Mexico Water Asso Rural Water Association 
we met with John Pajaka to do, uh, every three years they do the system study. And uh, it went quite well. He was actually pretty cool as well. Um, um, administratively, we have tentatively two findings. We don't have a water level two certified operator. And he didn't seem to, to stress on that because he knew we had two guys that went and took tests the Friday before. So he's like, yeah, just go ahead. As long as you um, are working towards that, we're happy. And then the other one, it's a whole new thing where they're requiring tank inspections. It's the stuff that we were talking about about six months ago, seven months ago, with getting our tanks inspected. Well, now it's um, on the list of the, yeah. Now it's yeah. it's an audit finding if we do or don't. And, and the concern, real quick, why we didn't do that was um, Richard. Uh, you had mentioned that we were kind of nervous about doing the inspection, cleaning up all the the stuff at the bottom, and then it exposing a hole or something. Um, Is that right? Right. That one at the high school. So that's why we haven't we didn't really approve it at that time. Sure. But now it's looking like we're going to have to, to go down that route, regardless of what, what could have been. Yeah, we're going to do it and fix it. And speaking with uh, Fred Black and Dominic, both of them are under their, uh, the agreement that um, for us to do that, particularly the high school tank, if we take that offline, we don't have pressure. That's the pressure, that pressurizes our system. So there's this thing called a variable frequency drive, which is an electronic thing that actually cranks up and slows down the motor, pump motor, that would pressurize our water system. So we, it's very energy efficient. So it's going to reduce our cost when we eventually set that up. But if we put one at the park system, or at the, yeah, the park uh, tank, we could pressurize the whole town and take that offline while we clean it. So that, that, that'll be a secondary pressurizing system other than gravity that we have. Gravity is very reliable because if there's no electricity, the power goes up. We still have water, but on the, on the flip side, if we don't, we only have one pressurizing system. So, so that's something we have to look at and <coughs> kind of addressing. And then all that stuff is on the cap, on our ICIP or infrastructure or capital improvements list. So a lot of that. And in fact, I didn't mention on this, but uh, our odorizer system, uh, Corona, the village of Corona, recently put installed an odorizer, a little, a little over a hundred thousand dollars, and they got capital out of funds pay for all of it. So even though we've started already getting the stuff, I, we believe the rest of it could possibly pay for with capital outlay improvements. And so the town clerk of uh, Corona gave me their application. We just changed up Corona, put them out there. And their, their system is exactly like ours, pretty much. So we'll submit it and see if we can get the state to pay for our fundraiser. Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, new phone systems. Um, we got new phone systems installed at Town Hall. It took about half a day to set it all up and get it all trained. We're still stressing on it. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to transfer things. Uh, and get a chance to meet them too. It's much better now though. Yeah. They're stressed because they were used to an old, antiquated way. Yeah. And so now it's like it's different. Uh, DFA, we have a representative from DFA in town. Uh, in, in town hall, and he's really doing an amazing job. He's not like an auditor, or he's not like the federalities of DFA. He's not here to criticize. He's actually here to like, dive into our system, to really help out, and he's helped out each time. He actually went through all of our stuff, and he's he told me today that he's glad that we jumped in as, as early as we did, because some, and he's experienced with Tyler 10. So he said he just finished one place, uh, a county that went to Tyler 10, and they went two years before calling him in to help, and he had to like fix all this messy stuff. And they actually said ours was pretty well set up. It's like with all the things that all the charter accounts that we set up, we only had five of them that were not connected. And we fixed that today, so he'll he'll be here for the rest of the week, and then possibly after maybe a year, we might invite him back and say, hey, how else can we fix this? He works closely with our auditor as well, so. Our auditor. He was actually talking with the auditor today. Uh, DFA and then DDC six. I took a defensive driving uh, certification course with the county. Our vendor only offers the DDC four, and uh, I also co-work with the county. I mean, like with the county do the elections, so I'm required to do the six for that job, and that is an amazing course. The first year I took it, I was just sleeping through it. The second year, because I took it in high school, and California is required by law to work with the first time driving. The second time I took it, it was a little bit more interesting. I had more family members, like more kids. This time it really hit home. 
so I really want to see, I, I'd like to bring this to our town, but I'm definitely bringing to DC4 to our town, making sure all of our drivers watch it over and over and over again. And because I don't know how to reiterate issues like texting and driving. It's like, well, many of us do it, but it is far more prevalent that people get injured or hurt or get into accidents while texting and driving than out drinking and driving. I mean, very few people drink and drive, but everybody texts and drive. And so it is, it is a very serious, it's, it's serious, I'm like, uh, uh, the other day my son, I was teaching my son how to drive, and uh, all he did was look down to switch a thing that distracted driving, and he went off the road. You know, we almost died. We literally almost died. And so uh, the next day, um, I'm driving along, and I looked down for a split second. I looked up. I was off the road. I drove off the road three times. My van just, it's not, I don't know what it is, but whenever I look away, I just <laughs> <laughs> so, distracted driving, which is also a, an issue with uh, DC defensive driving, is a serious issue as well. Keep your eyes on the road. Don't look down. Don't look at your radio. Don't look at your controls. Know your car before you get into the car. And so, that's a really serious issue that I want to push to all of our workers, all of our drivers. Motor vehicle department, I just got this today. Um, for the month of September, we brought in $20,000, $20,482, with uh, 77 driver's licenses issued, uh, 254 registrations, and 68 uh, estimated titles. This is just information that uh, the county clerk asked me to pass on to the, the elected officials here. It just says the Mountain Air candidates on the ballot, Mountain Air opted into the 2019 local election by shortening their limit terms. School districts uh, candidates are on the ballot in a sole conservation district. No, uh, so, oh yes, no soil water and conservation district uh, candidates on the ballot. Crunch Pinto, which you are in, excludes municipalities from voting in their election. <laughs> I talked to um, uh, Carrie a little bit about it. They're they're going to need bigger ones than what we want. So uh, I'm waiting for her to come in. She, she came in and we ordered a bunch of stuff, but we didn't, we're going to look into that. Okay. I think you need to be a bigger unit. Than we, uh, I'm just kind of curious on the rotary, kind of like that little stuff. Cause, I mean, you're the only one that can do it, right? Phyllis. Well, oh, Phyllis. Yeah. Last guy, maybe that little stuff. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Directions, but I don't know what you got to do to get it, but... Oh, just a wand. It's like $50. Yeah. It's very, very easy. <laughs> it's not, it's not too much. We actually often have her doing uh, witnesses. Like, sometimes we have to... Somebody sign a document and have two witnesses. So Phyllis and Esperanza come out and witness it, and I'll notarize their signature. But yeah, I mean, they can talk to you about it. Yeah. Any other questions for Dennis? All right, uh, mayor's report. Uh, Carnival is coming next weekend. It's also homecoming. Um, they are bringing the hammer. I know that was the last time. So the hammer shall be here. Um, we have the balloon fiesta or the balloon rally coming up on November 15th. Um, <coughs> starting today, actually, October 1st. If you go watch a movie at the Los Angeles Movie Theater, you will see an advertisement for the Mount Air Balloon Hall. So, um, very cheap uh, compared to even the newspaper here in town. It's $100 a month to run that. We run every movie, so it's very good deal. Um, I called a few other movie theaters to see possibly in Albuquerque. Uh, they were similar in pricing, but I haven't had any call back. Um, the new trucks for the public works, they've got new decals. Um, I like them. Some people. No, but I, I thought that they were, I think they were really nice. Uh, people say that they look kind of like police cars, which is a good thing. Now people will slow down when they see the public works guys. So, win-win. Um, in addition to the $50,000 grant, we did get approved for that uh, NMDOT $200,000 grant um, so that we can do a road study in the town of Mountain Air and look at sidewalks, drainage, all that kind of stuff. So very cool thing. Um, very, very exciting. Um, we are selling balloon pins for $5. Council, I was supposed to bring yours tonight and I forgot. So you guys can go to Town Hall tomorrow and pick us yours. 
but town council gets them for free. The, balloon, uh, the, the, the sponsor will get them for free, but not till um, not till the actual rally. And the blue pilot will get them for free. Everyone else has to be special. It's worth it. It is worth it. It is. it is worth it. And that money that we raise from the pin sales goes towards the food and stuff. So please. So where can you purchase the pin? Uh, town hall. Town hall. Starting, starting when? Tomorrow. Starting whenever. And we started last last week. Oh, okay. So go buy some pins. Mail them across the country. <laughs> Friends and relatives and everyone else. And I sold some to the Berlin people. Yeah. Cool. Yes. So, um, October 26th is the day that we're kind of looking at that forum for candidates. Okay. October 26th. Okay. That's going to be a Saturday. Uh, that will come out, but usually we like to do it like around 11 ish. So it's going to be both town candidates and school board candidates. So normally what we try to do in the past is do like one, one set, then we have like uh, finger foods and stuff for kind of like a little quick break. And then we're going to the other so. And the way that the forum works, for those that aren't uh, seeing and that are new in town, uh, basically the same question goes to all candidates. They all have the way of, uh, the opportunity to answer. It goes in uh, an order. So one person will answer the question first this time, the next one this time, mm -hmm. and so forth. So, um, yeah. Do we have any questions beforehand? No. You were asked on the spot. No. Who's <laughs> Uh, well, uh, we are, but I, mean, I don't know who's going to be the chair. Last time I got Matt Ravenstone to ask, so it will probably be someone like that. Maybe uh, Mike would volunteer to, I, I think Mike would be a great one to be, uh, to be, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. And then, uh, what else did I say about that? You don't get the end questions beforehand. You have to answer on the spot. Sure, I can do that. Uh, questions are, are, that's what I was going to say, questions are done there. So people that show up there will ask the question. Oh, we sure. may open it up prior to, um, real quick, uh, you know, online where they can email a question. We, could, we may possibly do that, but it, yeah, we don't, we don't make the question. The town does not. It's the citizen asks questions. Awesome. And yes, it will be recorded. Possibly live stream because we do have internet in there. Um, possibly live stream. If not, we will record it and put it up immediately. Okay. Huh? Uh, usually at the doctor's office. I believe that all the candidates that are running should be there. Uh, the two years ago when I ran, it was just me and the other person that was running. And we had a whole bunch of people that were running there, but only two people before the council showed up. Well, I mean, they're taking a risk. I think people that don't show up take a risk because a lot of people, if you can't show up to something like this, how are you going to show up when you're on the town council? So I think um, not showing up is taking a big risk. So, but that's just my personal love. Uh, EMS, uh, Sam, Wanda, Gail, and Wayne are back. Um, we had a meeting. Um, we discussed every, uh, everything. And um, they are back on board. So we are getting them. Uh, their, their, their keypad to get into the EMS building. Me and Sam looked at the building the other day because I do want to add um, some bedding, um, so a little small kitchen, because our eventual plan would be to get not only in, but to go to ships. Sorry, I should say that first. To go to ships. So basically someone like Gail and Wayne could do a 24-hour shift. They don't have to obviously stay at the station. They could be at home, but they know if a call comes in between Monday at midnight and Tuesday at midnight, that's their call, and they will get paid a certain amount for that. And then we would also bring in people, um, other EMTs from like Tijeras or other places, and we would pay them a certain amount to come and do a shift as well, and they would stay there. So. And during their shifts, they're not just sitting there eating popcorn and watching TV, they are making sure things are being stopped, uh, making sure uh, you know different things are happening. Another thing that uh, Officer Neville actually recommended is um, when they're there, if we get citizen uh, residents that are um, senior citizens that live alone, they can go during that time period to go do their vitals and just make sure that everything's done. So, um, just uh, all around trying to change the EMS department. I, it's going to take a lot. I'm going to ask council for money here soon. And I mean, uh, what's that old saying? Not old saying, but um, 
the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and not getting and, getting, and, and expecting a different result. And so we got to change that. We got to do something different with EMS. And Sam and them seem like they were on board. I do have a meeting with Gail coming up next week. Um, but I mean, I really think that we need to go towards this shift-based response. So yes. I want to ask this question, and I think are people the people that are going to be on this are they physically able to handle the stresses of what they can be asked to do yes yes thank you Hi. um yes are you are you still getting a new ambulance yes <laughs> i actually uh so i talked this morning uh, during my other work on my superintendent um, I was actually calling to get quotes on I was actually calling to get quotes on ambulances and stuff. So they some are some are in the one fifty range and some are up in the two hundred thousand dollar ranges. I think we have about two hundred and eight because we have one hundred and thirty five thousand for one grant, forty five for the other. But then the town has to provide twenty five percent to match the one hundred thirty five. So when you add all that together, it comes out to about two oh eight. So if we can get a, a, a good ambulance for like the 190 range, they have some really, really nice like Dodge 3500s that, I mean, you know, four by four, that thing is not stopping in the snow. So and that's what we need here. So, and the goal, I forgot to mention, this is a very important part. The goal when we go to shifts, maybe not so much with the locals that maybe have jobs and stuff, but definitely the ones that are coming from out of town and doing their shift would be to transport to Albuquerque. We will be start getting income for transporting people from Mount Air to Albuquerque. We're going to start tapping into that superior revenue that they love so much. They don't want to come out here, so we're going to take their money. Uh, with the new phone system, we got new. Uh, we got one new phone number. The phone number is not active currently, so don't call it. But it will be eight four seven ninety two hundred, and this number is going to be blasted on all of our um, town websites. Um, at events, at all this, this number will be your all to Mount Air. So the hope of that is you call, you know, press one for town hall, two for police, three for animal control, blah, blah, blah. I'm hoping to talk to the state highway department for the cows that go on the highway. You can press, you know, eight to report a cow on the highway and you'll go to the highway department. So this night, 847-9200 will be your all phone number. So you don't have to remember each individual number. Oh, cool. That would be a great idea. What was that? Refrigerator magnets. Oh, yeah. Refrigerator magnets. That have the number. Wonderful. Yeah. Perfect. And that is all I have to mind. Okay. Any? Okay. So, uh, real quick, do we have any public input before we go into the executive session? I'm just curious as to how our um, our radio ads have been doing. Do we he came in the other day. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. He came in the other day actually, and he showed us uh, uh, this long Excel sheet of how many times the ad has been playing. So they have been playing it. I have submitted a few ads um, for the balloon rally, and um, they're doing ads, I believe, for the businesses. So I don't listen to that particular radio station just because I don't listen to AM. I do. I don't listen to AM. Where is it that from? Oh, eighty-one seven. I listen to Sirius Satellite Radio, so I don't really do it in the local, but he brought in the sheet that showed us all. They are doing well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, do I have a motion to go into executive session? I make a motion to go to executive session. Second. Yeah, motion by Richard, a second by Adrian. Roll call Richard. Four. Adrian.
Can I transfer quickly <coughs> into the bank at this point, or is the window closed? No. Um, we'll learn. Me and Donna are working on that. We'll talk to you. Okay. So we're going to be updating you. Because I just want to talk about that. The following matters will be discussed in a closed session. Anyway. Discussion of purchase or acquisition of real property with legal description of Mountaineer Original Block 18 Lots 1 and 2, MHID M0062569901, located at the southwest corner of US 60 and New Mexico 55. We are an executive. 